Hi students, welcome to lesson number 41, Symbolic Interactionist Perspective Part B. Introduction Symbolic interactionism grew out of the American philosophical tradition of pragmatism in late 19th century, especially as elaborated by William James, John Dewey and Charles S. Pierce. The most important link between the pragmatic tradition and sociology was George Herbert Mead. One of his most famous books, Mind, Self and Society, published in 1934, is often taken as a charter for symbolic interactionist approach. Along with Mead, two other important early sociologists who shaped the interactionist tradition were Charles Horton Cooley and William Isaac Thomas. The most influential contributor to symbolic interactionist tradition was Herbert Blumer, who coined the term in 1937. Symbols are culturally derived social objects having shared meanings that are created and maintained in social interaction. Language and communication are symbols which provide the means by which reality is constructed. Reality is primarily a social product. The concepts of self, mind, society, culture emerges from and is dependent on interactions for its existence. After completion of this lesson, you will be able to understand the contributions of Charles Horton Cooley and Sigmund Freud. Mead says that each self is different from all the others. Further, there is not simply one grand generalized other, but there are many generalized others in society because there are many groups in society. People therefore have multiple generalized others and as a result multiple selves. Each person's unique set of selves makes him or her different from everyone else. I and me. Mead identifies two aspects of the self, I and the me. Mead says that the self is essentially a social process going on with these two distinct phases. I is the immediate response of an individual to others. It is the incalculable, unpredictable and creative aspect of the self. People do not know in advance what the action of the I will be. We are never totally aware of the I and through it we surprise ourselves with our actions. We know the I only after the act has been carried out. Mead lays great stress on I for four reasons. First, it is a key source of novelty in the social process. Second, Mead believes that it is in the I that our most important values are located. Third, the I constitutes something that we all seek, the realization of the self. Fourth, it is the I that permits us to develop a definite personality. The I gives meets theoretical system some much needed dynamism and creativity. Without it, actors would be totally dominated by external and internal controls. It is the I that makes these changes possible. Me is the adoption of the generalized other. In contrast to the I, people are conscious of the me. The me involves conscious responsibility. As Mead says, me is conventional, habitual individual. It is through the me that society dominates the individual. Indeed, Mead defines the idea of social control as the dominance of the expression of the me over the expression of the I. Mead also looks at 
the I and me in pragmatic terms. The me allows the individual to live comfortably in the social world while the I makes change in society possible. The I and me are thus part of the whole social process and allow both individuals and society to function more effectively. The individual and society are regarded as inseparable for the individual can only become human in a social context. In this context, he develops a sense of self which is a prerequisite for thought. He learns to take roles of others which is essential both for the development of self and for the cooperative action. Without communication in terms of symbols whose meanings are shared, these processes would not be possible. Man therefore lives in a world of symbols which give meaning and significance to life and provide the basis for human interaction. Charles Houghton Cooley Charles Houghton Cooley, American sociologist, believed human beings are essentially social in nature. A substantial source of information about the world comes through human interaction with others including the concept of oneself. He is most famous for the concept of the looking glass self, the idea of how people appear to others which he regarded as an essential component of development of self-image. Cooley also believed that human society functions organically and is healthy and successful when each individual member lives for the sake of others, not limited by selfish individualism. Cooley is known in sociology for his contribution to the development of the interactionist perspective and for his development of the looking glass self. He was one of the first to define the importance of society in forming the individual or self and the importance of primary groups. Cooley says primary groups are the nurseries of human nature. Cooley was interested to create an understanding of social phenomena that highlighted the subjective mental processes of individuals. These were effects and causes of society's processes. Society and individual are not separable phenomena but different aspects of the same thing. He resolved to create a mental social complex which he termed the looking glass self. This looking glass self is created through the imagination of how one self might be understood by another individual. It expanded William James idea of self to include the capacity of reflection on its own behavior. Other people's views build change and maintain self image. Thus, there is an interaction between how people see themselves and how others see them. Charles Houghton Cooley introduced the looking glass self in his work Human Nature and the Social Order in 1902 to describe how a person's self grows out of interactions with others and he proposed a threefold process for this development. First, we see how others react to us. Second, we interpret that reaction typically as positive or negative. And third, we develop a sense of self based on those interpretations. Looking glass is an archaic term for a mirror. So, Cooley theorized that we see ourselves when we interact with others. Sigmund Freud Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist 
who founded the discipline of psychoanalysis. Interested in philosophy as a student, Freud later decided to become a neurological researcher in cerebral palsy, aphasia and microscopic neuroanatomy. Freud went on to develop theories about the unconscious mind and the mechanism of repression and established the field of verbal psychotherapy by creating psychoanalysis, a clinical method for treating psychopathology. Id ego superego. Freud proposed that the human psyche could be divided into three parts, id, ego and superego. It is conceived as a reservoir of instinctual energy that contains biological urges such as impulses toward survival, sex and aggression. The id is unconscious, childlike and operates according to the pleasure principle, the drive to achieve pleasure and avoid pain. The id is characterized by primary process thinking which is illogical, irrational and motivated by a desire for the immediate gratification of impulses. Ego. Ego is considered as the component that manages the conflict between the it and the constraints of the real world. Some parts of the ego are unconscious while others are pre-conscious or conscious. The ego operates according to the reality principle, the awareness that the gratification of impulses has to be delayed in order to accommodate the demands of the real world. The ego is characterized by secondary process thinking which is logical and rational. The ego's role is to prevent the it from gratifying its impulses in socially inappropriate ways. Super ego. This is considered to be the moral component of personality. It contains all the moral standards learned from parents and society. The super ego forces the ego to conform not only to reality but also to its ideals of morality. Hence, the super ego causes people to feel guilty when they go against society's rules. Like the ego, super ego operates at all three levels of awareness. It comprises organized part of the personality structure. Freud believed that most mental processes are unconscious. He proposed that people have three levels of awareness, the preconscious, the conscious and the unconscious. The conscious contains all the information that a person is paying attention to at any given time. The preconscious contains all the information outside of a person's attention but readily available if needed. The unconscious contains thoughts, feelings, desires and memories of which people have no awareness but that which influence every aspect of the individual's day to day lives. Freud believed that information in the unconscious tries to come into the conscious and very often it is seen in slips of the tongue, jokes, dreams, illness symptoms and the associations people make between ideas. Although Sigmund Freud did not always make social context explicit, external forces are omnipresent in his writings. It is reflected in his writings like Civilization and its Discontents 1930, Totem and Taboo 1913 and Group Psychology and the Analysis of the Ego 1921. 
In group psychology, Freud defines psychoanalysis as social psychology and declares that individual psychology is rarely in a position to disregard the relationship of the individuals to others. Even Freud's most intrapsychic models relates the dynamics of self to the social order, values, ideals and moral codes transmit through primary socializing agents manifested in the superego. His theory of the unconscious casts the it into the role of seeking gratification through the pleasure principle. A person tends to seek pleasure and avoid pain according to definitions superimposed from birth by parents and educators and later internalized as his or her superego. The theory involves an important voluntaristic element, however, in that it does not instinctively rule the personality nor does superego arbitrarily restrict it. Ego seeks to reduce tension between it and superego through the reality principle. Freud acknowledged the importance of significant others who through social interaction assist ego in gradually dropping the its elementary selfishness and replacing it with the ability to love others and respect oneself which is the process and emergence. Freud believed that the physico-chemical elements interact with an environment of which the most significant part was other human beings. The parallel concept in sociological symbolic interactionism is self-concept which develops through interpersonal relations. Freud's model is strikingly similar to Mead's description of the process whereby child's eye gradually incorporates the values and attitudes of the community which is the generalized other into more adult and responsible me. Cooley is most famous for the concept of the looking glass self, the idea of how people appear to others which he regarded as an essential component of the development of self image. Cooley also believed that human society functions organically and is healthy and successful when each individual member lives for the sake of others not limited by selfish individualism. Freud believed that most mental processes are unconscious. He proposed that people have three levels of awareness, the preconscious, the conscious and the unconscious.